that's where you're wrong. I don't think attacking him is such a good idea. Back down, all of you. This is absurd. This is unnecessary. Wouldn't you rather be drinking than out here arguing? You're not going to take that from him, are you? I'm staying out of this one. I don't think attacking him is such a good idea. The three drunks scowl at you. And why is that? Because then you have me to deal with. This will end badly. Angry townsmen. They squint at you through red, bleary eyes. It sounds... It sounds suspiciously like you're defending him. Fucking right I'm defending him. I have a wolf. Hmm? Let's see. Townsperson. You're all the same. I kill him. Actually, let's gang up on both of them at once. Oh. Alright, party time. What the hell, wolf? <laughs> Would you like to help me? <laughs> Is the elf dead? Oh, okay, he's not dead. <coughs> Never mind, the elf can handle himself. Holy balls, man. As the, as the last of the attackers falls, the elf turns to you, the tension almost gone from his smooth face. Not quite how I hoped to get to know the neighbors. Thank you for your timely assistance with that awkward situation. How come you're not Scottish anymore? You're welcome. I'm glad I could help. Actually, that was fun. You mean for slaughtering them? You're welcome. Well, that is one way of putting it. He straightens his hood and you note the remains of fraying embroidery on his gloves. His boots are caked with the dirt of many months' travel, but the leatherwork beneath, it is sturdy and fine. Well, I suppose introductions are in order after that little fiasco. Aloth Corvus, sir, at your service. How'd you manage to get stuck out here? He laughs uncomfortably. That uh, is something of a long story. Well, I'm a wizard by training, and an adventurer by necessity. I was born in the Seathwood, part of the mainland of the Adir Empire, and both of my parents served the nobility, which afforded me an education for which I am grateful. However, there were no open positions in those houses, and so I decided to seek new means in a new land. And how exactly did you come to be here? I was traveling in a caravan, but we were separated near some ruins. In Gwythan ruins? Well, those can be dangerous places during the best of times, which these are not. And half the locals would arrest you for trespassing and the rest would kill you outright. He I'm curious, what exactly did you find there? I'd be a whack. <laughs> Several hooded figures operating a strange machine. Aloth goggles at you silently, apparently assessing your earnestness. Finally, he gives you a clipped, awkward laugh. You do manage to find yourself in rather interesting predicaments. Just how did you manage to cross those three drunks? I'm afraid that was a matter of misunderstandings and mistranslations. It doesn't help that people in these parts remember their war with Adir like it was yesterday. You did tell me that one man... You did tell that one man to go fuck his sister. You did make a rather lewd suggestion regarding one of the aggressors and his own sister. I see. What are you doing in Gilded Vale? An excellent question. I came looking for fresh air and cheap land. Instead, the magistrate gave me directions to the inn and a story about the local lord's expectant wife. But I take it that's a familiar tale. And you? I've been experiencing... Th th strange things of late. I'm looking for an expert on souls. Indeed. 
The local lord has searched far and wide for similar specialists. He has rid himself of them almost as desperately. Mm, he nods at the gnarled old tree in the center of town. Yeah, I've seen that. Not really impressed. I expect that such expertise... I expect that such expertise would be best sought elsewhere. You don't exactly look like a settler. Begging your pardon, but neither do you. Yet, circumstances can find a person in the strangest of places. Hmm. I should get going. As should I, given recent events. It's just as well. I've had enough of the watered wine and lumpy beds at the inn. They say even the owner tired of the place. Just up and left one day. It explains quite a lot about the upkeep. Perhaps I could join you. I could use a change of scenery, and I find it's better to travel in numbers. Hmm, so do I. Let's go, then. Excellent. I shall follow you. Sweet! I got myself an elf, yes? I do. Of course. Now we can take that bear down, piece of shit. Hey, fuck you, boy. Oh, I thought you were a skeleton. Well, fuck you anyway, you skeleton-looking person. Hmm? What the fuck? Look at all this shit. Take it all. Carrying too much weight. Ah, shit. Can you... Take some of this shit off my hands? I grabbed that sword, so I don't understand why it... You're in the party now, yes. anyway, so... The dog can't get shit. Like, well, I can't pick up shit. <laughs> yeah, screw, screw you, dog. Yes? Aloth killed the angry townsman. Actually, it's a woman. Indeed. He murdered that woman in cold blood. Nice going, Aloth. Are they gone now? Anybody else want to fuck with us? Good to know. <laughs> to the end. He said, go fuck your sister. Jeez, that's a bit rush. I mean, it's a bit harsh. It's a bit rush, too, but, yeah. What are you gonna do? Hey, locals. Yeah, you guys are just villagers. What's going on, Pasca? Hail and well met. I thought you were a man. No offense. Oh, it's you, Tenfirth. Try it again. Oh, it's you. Tenfirth told us what you did for him. It's such a relief to have him back. I can't thank you enough. Oh, yeah, the dwarf guy. I forgot about him. That was like a day ago. Consider yourself a favorite of the house. Discounts on drinks, rooms. Tenfirth said he wanted to whip up something nice for you. He's already back to work in the kitchen. She laughs. So, what would you like? I could use some reliable help. Do you know of anyone looking for work? I'd like to know more about the Black Hound. Could I see what you have for sale? Like a room, please. Certainly. You're always welcome. Am I welcome for free? Hell no! Mm. Plus two to resolve. Common room's free. We'll just go in the common room, I guess. Rest. It's free. Free's a good thing. Don't touch the fire there, crazy elf. It's okay. I'm a magician. Ow! Fire hurts. Your sleep is restless, and so is my voice. Do you hear that? Double double? Your sleep is restless and fevered, assaulted by hisses and whispers blanketed with a suffocating anxiety. You open your eyes to awaken and find yourself in front of a gilded veil's gallow tree, the creaking of its ropes growing louder in your mind until the sound is deafening. 
hanging from the trees an old dwarf woman whose face had shriveled inward like molding fruit. Her head hangs limply to one side. As you look at her, she looms larger and larger in your mind until she is mere inches from your face. Ah, stink breath and scary face. Suddenly her head snaps up and her eyes open and they are empty and behind them is a vast nothingness that makes your stomach drop. Her mouth slowly parts and with a gust of rancid air she speaks a word. Watch! Jeez, that scared me. You jolt awake. The foul smell of the dwarf woman's breath still permeating your nostrils. Sweat runs down your face in thick droplets, and your skin is soaked from head to toe. You remember the woman. You remember seeing her decaying face when you spoke with the magistrate. He called her an animancer. Copyright? Though it fills you with a new queasy apprehension, you feel a strange compulsion to see this woman once more if only to confirm she is truly dead. <laughs> I agree with him. Let's say seek hell. Oh, much better when you zoom out. Seek, seek the window because that's a pretty sweet ass window. What's that say? Some kind of brown slop congelating in the dishes. Let's go find the dwarf. Hmm? I shall. Are you the dwarf? Do I look like a dwarf? Uh, goat man? Sounds like a no then. Ooh, wow, there's cool dudes everywhere here. Ah, they're just villagers. What do we got here? I'm the goat man! Fuck off. <laughs> that must have been a hell of a joke. Steal. Wait, it said I could steal shit. I'm not gonna steal anything. Steal that table. Why can you steal the table? Oh, suit. No, I don't want to steal from the table. Ooh. These are people people. They're not people, people. As you near, you feel a vibrant history contained in the essence of this woman's soul. Voices from its past seem to call out to you. Reach out for the soul! You see a woman emptying her satchel under her bed, taking stock of her inventory. Potions, bandages, tinctures, and her herbs. Yes, yeah, sure. Are scattered throughout the room. Haphazardly, she bites her lip, head tilted to the side, considering. She begins to repack one item after the other. Carefully, deliberation undercut by shaking hands. Each item has clearly marked, marked place, but no matter how she repacks it, she isn't satisfied. The shaking woman... The shaking worsens as she empties it out once more, one hand held to her mouth. Tears eke from her eyes as she gives up all semblance of order and shoves everything she can into the satchel, grabbing it and running out of the bare house. Straightening her back as she walks to the docks, chin high, eyes hard and red, a gangly young elf offers his condolences, but she can't see him for the ocean ahead of her. She wanders the docks, offering her services as a doctor to any who will listen, anyone heading out on high tide. Less than an hour later, she watches her childhood disappear in the distance, a tiny speck of an island, and tries not to jump. All right, these guys are getting creepy. Isn't that same? Is that the same guy? Is your new uh, essence of the man's soul? Reach out for the soul. A group of men standing in a makeshift round a makeshift practice target. This man stands in the middle of them, explaining the construction and use of a bow. He holds it up, pointing out each part as he speaks about it and what it does. He then walks away from the target, telling them to remain where they are, and takes his place about 200 feet away. He carefully lines up his shot, explaining what he is doing as he does, 
lets the arrow fly. It hits the target dead center, much to the surprise and delight of the boys near it. He smiles, walking towards the boys, taking out, take, talking about proper stance and how most effectively to hold the bow, and how most effectively hold the bow. Yeah, should say how to most effectively hold the bow. Does okay. A noise comes from the tree line near the practice venue, and he stops, scanning the woods. Blue eyes squinting against the sun, a shadow moves, making its way through the forest behind them. He draws an arrow, lines up the shot, carefully tracking the motion of the hidden creature. Loosen the arrow, he wastes no time, and quickly grabs another. The boys spin, watching the arrow fly into the forest, immediately lost among the trees. There is sudden explosive movement in the undergrowth, as a deer erupts from the tree line. Running across the edge of the clearing, the boys laugh, turning to joke with the man about his lousy shot. They stop talking, seeing him holding the bow and leading the deer with a knocked arrow. They drop to the ground as he looses the last arrow, which flies true and strikes the deer right behind its shoulder, piercing heart and lungs and dropping it dead almost immediately. The boy stared at the deer for a few seconds and then slowly turned to look at the man, newfound respect in their eyes. He smiles again and breathes a quiet sigh of relief. So why don't you just say, like, she's a thief, he's a hunter, and none of them actually I'm here. are here. I shall. Because they can't see me. That's a bit of a suck. This isn't the way to the kitchen. Look like a kitchen to me, sir. Shut up, wolf. Wolves don't talk much more than they should. All right. Not really a big fan of the loading screens. I mean, I just went like upstairs or whatever. Hey, I saw that windmill. That's all I can say. <laughs> well, we made it upstairs. It only took about six hours. <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? What's a carouser? Ugh. Ah. Oh. Are you guys real? You're not spirits, are you? Hmm? Oh, son of a bitch. You know what? See a man soar through the air, hitting a wall. Doesn't do, 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 do. Breaks. Tattooed. The burly man bows to a room of the unconscious. Blah blah blah. You know what? From now on, I'm, I'm not. Here. I'm not talking to anybody because you're not fucking real. I was looking for the kitchen. Why am I seeing dead people? Is this my room? Is now. Oh, that's locked. It's my. It's not my room. Whatever. I'm taking the shit anyway. So what difference does it make? Are you real? I'm not here to rob you. That's that's pretty dirty, man. These bones are covered in tiny bite marks. What's this? Oh, it's a black hound. Isn't that the name of the bar? Or... Yeah, let's go outside. Yay, another loading screen. Say what you want about Ace Wendell being complicated. At least it doesn't have these long-ass loading screens.
I want to play the game. I don't want to stare at fucking loading screens. Nothing to do but bite my nails. Look at a kitty cat. Oh, fuck. I don't want to be outside. This place sucks balls. <laughs> Why are we outside in the first place? You guys real? <laughs> I'm going to stay outside just because I don't want fucking to deal with the loading screens. Hey, now you can see the green cape. His cape's not green. Let's see if we can make his cape purple, because he's a purple dude. Get purple. Actually, can we make that a little darker? A little darker purple? Cape's still not purple, though. Whatever. I, I keep forgetting he's a sorceress. A sorcerer. No offense. You do look like a chick. What kind of magic do you do? Uh, missiles. Lights. <laughs> Attacks, deflection. Freeze damage. Oh, okay. Decreases the will and leaves them dazed. Burn damage. Wow. Sorry. I'm holding a book and a mace. Take your pick. I choose justice. What is this in? The drywood part one. Oh, if I ever want to read about your your little elf world, I'll read that book. Ah, stupid fly. Get out of here. Alright. Uh, is there nothing else over here? Most of the cool stuff shone the other side, I guess, Sean. So there's like nothing there. That's just the end. Well, let's just go back up here. We should go kill that bear, but... Gotta check out what's on the other side. Villager says, ha. Huh. Do you want... Oh, I'm really tempted to just go down here and see what's down here. Could be like, uh... Just a bunch of friggin' rats. Or regular rats. Uh, we need more people. What's this? What's that say? Black hammer or smithery. Oh, cool. So that's a smith. Where do you hire people? Who are you? Are you a hireable p p person? Does anything here look like. You should be able to hire people in a tavern, but. Do do do. Alright. Let's go back here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm guessing you're just cows, right? There's probably nothing back here except an exit. So this place is a lot smaller than it looks. Just me, or is there like nothing here? Is 
Sorry, coming through. It's in the fields. Despite the rains, the stalks feel as dry and stiff as locusts' husks. Wonder why. Huh? You ever grab a locust's husk? It's good times. Well, without the good times. No? Well, what's up here then? Not a damn thing. Alright. Well, there's the entrance way, never mind. Yay, did it. Holy balls is a small town. There's more rain in there, Trumbull. We won't settle for scraps while you grow fat on our crops. A muffled shouting emerges from inside the mill. The first thing he took off came through that door that's a sap between the eyes. Dad's honey, swear in me. I put the door like a bag. It's not that muffled. Stop being literal. Come away for now, lads, but we'll be back, Trumbull, and we'll have f fair prices, or by the flame we'll have a reckoning. Investigate the feud. Or just kill anything that moves. Hey, Trumbull. Yes. Whoops. Trumbull, an elven man, stands before you. His relatively stocky build suggesting the life of labor. His face is pale and drawn, and his eyes are wide. Behind him, a younger man and woman exchange worried glances. He's got a crossbow. He doesn't look that worried. Rover. The miller raises a club as you enter. It shakes violently. I don't see a club. It's hard to see. I know he's got a crossbow. Get back if you value your life. Hold on. I'm not here to hurt anyone. The miller hesitates, then lowers his club. Wait, I know you. You just came into town, right? Don't tell me Swiner's already got his claws into you. Gods, that's all I need. What was all that ruckus outside? I thought you could use some help. Those people out there seem pretty angry. Really? Trumbull's sigh. Trumbull sighs relief. Hilia's tits. <laughs> yeah. Could I use a friendly face? I take it you heard some part of what the, cra the crowd's asking for. Grain. As if I've got it all tucked away somewhere. Swiner's been egging that lot on for days now. They've been keeping clear so far, but things keep going on like they are. I don't know how much longer we've got before things get messy. Please, if you're not here on his behalf, maybe you could speak to Swiner. He won't listen to me anymore. Just explain that we're all getting smaller rations now. We're all making uh, sacrifices. I'll go see what I can do. I had some other questions. Yes? Who's Swiner? <laughs> the dwarf, the one standing out there spreading lies among the villagers. Bastard's been here for decades, and he hasn't gotten any kinder with time. The miller hesitates, then lowers the club a fraction. Who are you? Is Swiner roping foreigners into his little crusade now? My name's Jastrin. I only just arrived in Gilded Vale. You picked a bad time to come visiting. Gilded Vale's had all its 
shine scraped off. Just a big dung heap now, and Swiner thinks he's king of it. They're all mad. They're all of them mad. I'll be going. Resolve the feud between Trumbull and Swiner. 